Tudor has launched a brand new Pelagos. It's an FXD in black, and we're gonna check it out. But first, we're gonna go diving. Now the new watch that Tudor's launched uh, seems to have upset a lot of people. Frankly, I was, I was a bit disappointed, to be honest. I, I think one of the challenges around, and I said this to, to the guys at Tudor, one of the challenges around having such a popular brand is that when a launch happens, there's so much speculation and people get creative. They often come up with what I think are sometimes better designs than what the brands come up with themselves. Although there isn't a huge amount to talk about with the watch, this trip alone has been Pretty epic, pretty cool. We are in Panama City in Florida, but this trip was all about the dive experience. The adults went off and they did their diving and, and the kids went snorkeling. But it was cool to take a dive watch actually kind of diving, at least under the water. If you talk about the watch itself, there isn't actually a huge amount to talk about. It's a Tudor Pelagos FXD, but it's in black. But the thing to talk about is Tudor's history, Tudor's legacy of working with the US military. But in particular for this one, it's the US Navy. And for these guys, this watch isn't new. According to watches of espionage, the black Pelagos FXD has been in production for at least a year for the Navy SEALs. And similar to the blue version that was done for the Marine Nationale, where the military version had two lines of text, civilian version had four lines of text, exactly the same was done in this case. Two lines of text for the SEALs, four lines of text for the civilians. Panama City is home to the unit that trains the US Navy divers. It's also home to this museum that's full of all of these early submarines. And they had a chap there, forgotten his name. His name was Jeb, Commander Jeb, an awesome old guy. He was a part of UDT-12, which is Underwater Demolition Team. These are the guys that preceded the Navy SEALs. And when he was serving, he was issued a Tudor Submariner and they had his watch there. My whole objective of going into the Navy was to be a frogman, you know, and I, Remember the movie when I was a kid, Richard Widmark, The Naked Warrior? They said, hey man, that's what I, that's what I want to be. It, it's interesting hearing him talk about uh, missions and, and, and what he got up to and getting into trouble a lot. <laughs> when I went into OCS in the Navy, they gave you what they called a gig if you had an infraction, okay? And you had a gig for, you know, small gig. If not, shoes weren't shined properly, you'd get one gig. But if you were not on time for any evolution, you'd get about five gigs. Mm -hmm. A week before, two weeks before I graduated, I had 59 gigs. <laughs> and 60 year out. So I was destined to be a loser. <laughs> it's interesting hearing him talk about his relationship with his tutor because he had an element of being surprised that it's a product that is kind of in the luxury space. Because for him, it was merely just a tool, just like his, his rifle or his knife or his compass. It was a device that helped him do his job as opposed to anything luxurious or fancy. And I absolutely love that outlook on watches because that, ultimately that's what they should be, that they are tools. The fanciness for me comes from the ability to perform that tool task well. Accuracy, robustness, that's where I see the fanciness. But all through the my days in the teams. Time, so important. We'd have extractions, we had to be at a certain place where we'd meet with a helicopter pickup or wherever it was, or a submarine pickup, etc. And man, in Vietnam, you know, you're just not on an open field somewhere. You have a place where you have to rendezvous at 0600 in the morning for a pickup. And if you weren't there, okay, you're gonzo. Yeah. <laughs> the watch that we have is, is a standard Pelagos. It's 42 millimeters wide, it's 12.75 millimeters thick, it's 52 millimeters from lug to lug, and it's brushed titanium. Now one of the questions was around the bezel, and the bezel is a 60 click unidirectional bezel. The watch has 200 meters of water resistance, which some people might say that that's not enough, but remember that the FXD is a military grade watch, and so it isn't a matter of how deep you can go, it's going deep enough to fulfill that mission. It's got 22 millimeter lugs. The strap pins are built in. They're not strap pins, they're strap bars. And they are built into the watch just as military watches need because you don't want a strap pin to fail. The movement inside is the MT5602. This is Tudor's standard affair of movement. It's uh, anti-magnetic, 70 hours of power reserve, COSC certified. 
So it was a little disappointing to, to see when I visited their, their factory. I, I put a link in the description to that, that video. There was a whole lot of talk around the fact that they're working on mass producing META certified movements. So META testing is, is significantly more uh, rigorous than, than COSC testing. It's, it's a different, COSC testing pretty much focuses on accuracy, whereas META testing, there's an accuracy element to it, but it's more about robustness. It's how strong and how robust is the movement. So it would have been cooler to see a META movement inside this watch, but no doubt that would have pushed the price up. This new FXD costs £3,490 and it comes on a one piece nylon strap with Velcro or a one piece rubber strap with a buckle. Like many people, I would have liked Tudor to have done something different. That's not to say that there's anything wrong about the FXD in the slightest. I actually think the black version looks significantly cooler than the blue version. There's something beefy about black, there's something purposeful about black, and I'm a sucker for little touches of history with the little red text at the bottom there. It just means that I'm still holding out for a normal production Pelagos, an update in the normal production Pelagos. I'd love for them to do that Pelagos of 42 millimeter on the bracelet with a slightly updated clasp, maybe make the case a touch thinner and give it a Meta certified movement. I think it'd be pretty cool. The Pelagos 39 was an awesome release. That would have been a cool watch with a Meta certified GMT movement and a proper matte black dial. In fact, that would be perfection. Guys, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this release. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon to get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want to check out the watch straps and watch accessories that I sell, jump over to barkandjack.com. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack and give me a follow, Adrian Barker. I'll see you guys very soon. I'm going to enjoy the sunset. I'm going this way. Take care, guys.